I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart, smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace from websites and online stores, the marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Uh, sorry. Sorry for the delay. Yes. Last week. Uh, My Andrew, bad. I was out of town. Andrew Schultz took another honeymoon. So, yeah. Why not? <laughs> I ain't got to explain myself. Yeah. Andrew Schultz. You know what I mean? I would almost explain myself. Andrew Schultz said uh, vacations over child's college funds. <laughs> I ain't got no kids. <laughs> what we say before? <laughs> that abortion gonna cost if you want one of those. That's where your money's gonna go. <laughs> I'm married. I can't get those. <laughs> <laughs> Try to convince your, your, your wife to get an abortion. There's no way. Nah, there's definitely no way. It depends, though. Y'all might have already had like four or five. You know what I mean? That is true. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah, might just be tired is. of having them. That is true. You know? Your wife with no kids that you just got married to. Oh, no, she wants the baby. That's going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, she she was trying to get one when we were out there in Italy. Really? Yeah. What you mean? Explain how you one know, tries you know, to get you one. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. She was clutching hey, the cheeks. You know. Clutching the cheeks. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eject. Why not? Eject. That's the beauty of being married, bro. Hey, man. You can have guilt-free, raw Sex. Yeah. And not care where the cum goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was in a lead hole. Yo, oh, your dude. hair in Europe is wild. Wow. Your, your, right? your, your, your Europe hair is crazy. Yeah, when in Rome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when in Rome. Do you, you know what I mean? Do you go to the Europe hairstylist when you get there? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you going on YouTube for tutorials? My slick back shit. <laughs> what? I, I brought it back even today a little bit. Look at me. No, I leaned in, bro. I leaned in. Did. I fucked with Italy. Italy's great. I've never been. Is it really fly? Oh, you would love it, dude. Food, amazing. Yeah, you got to stick with the Italian shit. They don't know how to do nothing else. But that's <laughs> the only thing I would want when I go over there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think what happens is sometimes like people try to open restaurants out there that like uh, like gastro, you know, whatever. You know, yeah, they like yeah, yeah. mix different cultures and food. Italians don't know how to. Italians are the best at pasta, pizza, and fish. Yeah. Don't even try to do anything else. That makes sense, though. So when you're in Italy, you could be like, hey, man, I want to go to an Itali American restaurant tonight. Uh, you in the move for American? No. They do that type of shit? No, I mean, some people do. Or yeah. they try to, like, make the Italian thing, like, fancy. Because so many rich people are going there. Yeah. And rich people need, like, a fancy thing. And we were just telling the guy at the hotel, like, yo, where do y'all eat? We want to go where you guys eat. Right. And those places were fire. And anytime we went to, like, the fancy place, mid Mid. Yeah. Because really? yeah. they were trying too much. Italians yeah. perfected Italian food. Yeah. Like, you don't go to China and then try to eat... Mexican. Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, exactly. you go to China, you try to eat a little bit of everything. Yeah, there's, I mean, literally. There's a lot of different <laughs> things over there. You literally can, can eat everything. Yeah, like, yeah. we've seen the, the videos of the wet markets and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah, probably yeah. go there and try something very unique. Yeah. But maybe that's what they're great at doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't last in Italy. All too much cheese, bro. Oh, cheese fucks you cheese, up? Cheese ruins me. But, well, I'll tell you this. My wife has an allergy to cheese in the States. Really? Gives her acne, fucks her whole shit up. Me too. Over there? None. Wow. Oh, because it's not processed and shit, probably. Oh. Uh, None of the food. Like, she can't eat yeah. dairy here. She can't even yeah. drink dairy here. Yeah. She goes over there, has as much as she wants, not a single pimple, nothing. Wow. Well, I mean, it's only been a few days. Give it a minute. This <laughs> I'm just saying I, I don't know if we can go with this theory just yet. No, I no, just I'm got back, bro. I'm telling you, usually, <laughs> usually. That's what she just she eats it there and then blames it when she gets back. Yeah. No, nah, but yeah, her I'm telling you, the food out there is different. So are you taking another honeymoon is the question. No. Nah. We were out there because we were out there, we did podcasts in England. What? Okay. So basically, I... Oh, wait a minute. England, Italy's next to England? Nah, but it's close enough. Okay. So basically, okay, this is what happened. <laughs> I got I got asked to do this movie in northern England, a place called Leeds. Oh, you went to go shoot a movie? Exactly. Hey! So, and it's so funny, because the more I tell people on this podcast to not cast me in movies, 
<laughs> I swear to God, Charlemagne, <laughs> the more I get cast in movies. It's the audience, bro. Bro, bro, bro. They're I'm, like, yo, this guy has an audience. Dude, and every time we get a contract and it's just like the first thing we're like, yeah, we can't do it. And they're like, we need him to do it. It's kind of crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's only going to continue to make what you're doing that much bigger. Mm. You know what I mean? I, yo, I don't know if you realize it. I wish, I wish we could gauge some of this stuff and just see like how many new Andrew Schultz fans it is. Because yeah. I get it a lot. What do you mean? Like people coming up to me like, like some, a dude came up to me the other day at the radio. Mind you, you've been coming, to, you've been at the station for a decade. There was a dude named, dude that works at KTU. He was like, man, I didn't know Andrew Schultz was so funny, man. <laughs> he, was like, he, was like, he was like, man, I, I watched the infamous man and I'll be watching all his stand-up clips, man. He was like, yo, he's really, really oh, fucking that's funny, that's yo. Far. And I'm like, yeah. Yo, you know my you know my favorite thing is when people know you, they know me, have no clue that we've been doing a podcast for 10 years. That's what dude that came to you. No, dude that came to you actually said, he said, yo, y'all still do brilliant in it? Yeah, what we- <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bro, it is. Yo, I swear to God. I, who was I talking? I was talking, I think, Mark about this. I swear to God, if we, like, in two weeks, announce to the world that we're starting a podcast and we're calling a brilliant idiot, <laughs> <laughs> it might be bigger than our original podcast. Like, if we did, yeah, and, Yo, what if Sucks. we trolled the world with that? Yo, we're starting a podcast. We're coming together. You know what uh, I mean? Like, oh. long time, boys. You're and like, we realize. No, you yeah. the brilliant idiot, the brilliant idiot, as you know it, is officially launching. <laughs> 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 the billion idiots, as it's you know it, is officially launching. launching. Yeah. You know what's, what's crazy though? It's brilliant idiots, and I'm it's not an exaggeration. It's one of the biggest podcasts out on here. the planet. It's been been for a long time, but I think it's because it's the brilliant idiots. Oh. They don't say like Charlemagne, Charlemagne and Andrew. Andrew. So it's kind of like you see you see the door, right? You're like, well, what do they serve in there? <laughs> yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Then you walk in, you're like, oh, that's Charlamagne and Andrew. That's a couple of dishes I'm familiar with. I'll stay for a while. Oh, so should we put ourselves more on it? Should, should we be more present in the marketing? Or did we create this kind of cool, almost like, subculture thing that has been going on for a decade? I love the subculture. I don't know. I, love, I mean, I, I, go, I go back and forth. I love the subculture, but then sometimes I feel like, are we maximizing its full potential? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I go back and forth. Yeah. I'm with whatever at this point. I mean, I'm with whatever just because I like, I like what we built. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That's what I, I like. What we built. It is just funny that people could know the both of us separately, I, and not know that we have a podcast. It's, listen, the brilliant idiots, the people who know know though. The people who know. Yeah, know. you get we get a couple million listens a month. What more you want? Yeah. No, we've been, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> but but okay. So I was out there. I was doing this this film, and then uh. Then I, I told the boys, I'm like, yo, should we do some pods in England? It's close. Yeah. Right. And so we went out, we did a few podcasts with, uh, you know, some creators out there in England. That was super fire. And, um, and then everybody went out and had a little European vacation, bro. Wow. Yeah. Oh, they all went. Oh yeah. Alex partying in Paris. I saw Paris. Alex there, but Alex was there. You was in Paris with Weezy, yeah. right? Yup. Yeah. Mark went out there to, to Crete. He went out there to Greece. I'm going know. to Greece. You going to Greece? I'm definitely going to Greece. Why? Why? I, just because I've seen a lot of fly ass Greece videos yeah. on Instagram and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Greece looks like a lot of fucking fun. Yeah. You beautiful. been to Greece? No, not yet. But yeah, it looks beautiful. I want to go. I don't want to go to what's it called? Mykonos. Mykonos. I don't want to go there. I want to go to the, uh, Santorini. Santorini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They say yeah. Santorini is like the, the spot for couples and yeah. family. Yeah. They say Mykonos. Or maybe I'm getting confused. They say Mykonos is the party place. Yeah, I think Mykonos is a little bit more party. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then Santorini. But there's a bunch of those islands and like, you know, every year a new one becomes even more popular. And yeah. Most of these islands have like a fire-ass resort that you stay with you and your wife, a hotel. And then if you want to engage in the other stuff, you get to, to Bro, do I saw that. Janet Jackson post some shit from Greece. It was wild. And I looked it up and I'm like, this shit got to be $50,000 a night. Oh. And it was not. Not even close. Actually, yeah, that's the thing. Like they say, yeah. Greece is, I mean, it's super affordable. Like, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to Greece. I don't know if I'm going this year, but at some point, no, dude, the thing is, I don't know. <clears throat> and maybe you felt this a little bit more because you grew up around more nature than me, but like you're around these, like, at least in the, the Amalfi Coast in Italy, there's these, like, basically these cliffs mm-hmm. that line the, the beach, right? It's not traditional beach like we know, which is just like sand and a bunch of sand and then there's water. It's basically like gigantic cliff drops off water, right? And you look at these fucking cliffs 
And it's like the most humbling thing because you have to recognize it took millions of years for that cliff to be there. Like I look at buildings in New York and people are wildly impressed in buildings. And I grew up in Manhattan, right? So this is all I know. And it's impressive. Like you fly in, you're like, wow, human beings did this. That building took a year to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you look at a fucking cliff that God made. Oof. And it's millions of years of Oof. like volcanic eruption. Oof. In the under the ocean, Oof. built it up, uh, tectonic plates slamming in one another. And it's just like it, it makes you realize like how small you are and how short a time we have here. And it's a fucking really nice thing to do. I always feel like it makes you feel how big you are. OK, OK, go on that. Because, because if I God, the if, reaction. if God created all of this and decided to create me as well, oh. you know, what I mean, then. Yeah. But that mountain might be looking at you like, look at this unique looking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're like mosquitoes, man. I think, think we're so? like, I think yeah, like rust. You know what I mean? It's just like really? we're in the way. Like I don't know, bro. Because think about it, that mountain can't do nothing but sit there, like a cow. And the mosquitoes <laughs> on a cow, right? The, 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 you know what I mean? The cow ain't. I'm gonna start biting mosquitoes back, bro. <laughs> I'm tired of this shit. I'm not lying, bro. Mosquitoes been fucking me up my whole life, man. And slapping them and smushing them. Don't. Wouldn't you think that would scare other mosquitoes? Nope. They don't give, a, don't fuck. give a fuck. Yeah. They motherfuckers. Relentless. Muslims. Who, who they like? They like, <laughs> that shit is jihad, bro. <laughs> I'm serious. That shit is holy oh jihad. Think about that. <laughs> yeah. They jump on your arm and they want that blood so bad that they don't give a fuck. They willing yeah. to die for that shit. Bro. 100%. Like that shit is crazy. And you know they can only bite five times a day. They... they <laughs> This is true, dude. This is true. No, man. You gotta be very, you got, I'm going to start biting the motherfuckers back. Yo, you got to. Um, what did we see this week? That What did we miss last week? Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> so I'm I'm like I'm oh uh, the Breakfast Club is no longer the same. The Breakfast Club never as be you the know same. It, is or officially like that. over. Whoa. Yeah, I mean it's, I, as you know it now, are you going with a new host? What's the vibes? And yeah, why is she I'm, still on? Because she's gonna be on to the re end of the year. Like, I think oh. it's dope. You know, um, salute to Angelie. Angelie is starting her own show. Uh, way up, way up with Angelie. It's it's actually a spinoff of the Breakfast Club. Mm. The Breakfast Club comes on six a.m. to ten a.m. Monday through Friday, Angelie will be on 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. So literally in all of these, she, I think she's syndicated in like 30 plus markets. So when the Breakfast Club goes off, Angelie comes on. Boom. You know what I mean? Which I think is dope. I think it's dope that the Breakfast Club has gotten to the point where we've become this franchise that can create, you know, spinoff shows. Yeah. You know, and uh, I thoroughly, when I say thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed when, you know, we put out uh, the planned communication of said tweet. You know what I mean? Which is wild to me that people would think we didn't plan that. Like, come on, bro. We've yeah. been doing this for 13 years. Like, yeah. like you, you, you're, you're still uh, like surprised yeah, yeah, <laughs> when yeah. waters are stirred up yeah. to catch fish. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed when that tweet went out and watching everybody scramble. <laughs> yeah, 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 Like yeah. watching everybody try to figure out what the fuck is going on. And the beauty of it is I didn't tell nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Envy didn't tell nobody. Yeah. Nobody told anybody. There was only five people who knew that tweet was going out. Yeah. It was me, uh, Thea Mitchum, our boss, Thea Mitchum, Dennis Clark, our radio consultant, Angela, and Envy. So this is literally, you're hitting me. Hitting yeah. me. Like, my close friends are yeah. hitting me. Yeah. trying yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what's happening? And I'm yeah. like, what you mean what's happening? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? A tweet. <laughs> and people are sending me the tweet. I'm just like, interesting, interesting, interesting. Taylor didn't even. Taylor was so mad the next day. Oh, really? <laughs> Fear, furious. Why? Get on Why? the mic, Taylor. Talk. Ah! I don't even want to talk about it now. Because she wasn't included? <laughs> no, but we didn't tell nobody. That's the point. But you got a big mouth. No. <laughs> you would have told people. Yeah. No, it's not. You are the mic. The mic. She's still upset. She's she heated. But it's, but here's the thing. You have to do certain things like that, at, at especially yeah, it was great. in radio. You know what I mean? We like got to I see like... all these old clips from you pop up that were fucking hysterical. Oh, my oh, God. Bro, Alex posted this one clip of you <laughs> asking Magic Johnson, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm on vacation, and my wife and I are howling at this fucking clip, dude. Dude, it was that one bitch from Sacramento. 
Sorry, and he goes, now it's... <laughs> and sorry, he Taylor. breaks, bro. He breaks, <laughs> he breaks. Dog. That's the best part. He tried to be diplomatic. He tried to be politically correct. He got like three seconds into his plan response and then started dying Because laughing. he knows that's how you would think. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 Anytime yeah. you diagnose with some type of STD, you chart narrowing it down. No, y'all. You got to figure out where you got this shit from. He knows yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, So I just yeah. wanted to ask him that. You know what's so crazy? I forgot about all of those shit, yo. Bro, you have Sorry. so many yeah. fucking <laughs> highlights, dude. I almost want you to cancel the Breakfast Club Weekly so just these old clips can pop up of oh, you. Are we doing the documentary? Say again? We doing the documentary. Oh, you need oh, to. Oh, no, documentaries, absolutely. I mean, we, we were and working on all the video. We've got thir- we've literally got 13 oh, years of it. footage of the Breakfast Club. I'm talking about no, that documentary. Every interview, every audio break for 13 years is absolutely positively in the can at Power 1051 right now. Yeah, we have yeah, all yeah, of that yeah, footage, yeah, yeah. everything. We got shit that we've never released. We got interviews that we've never released from people because they were just terrible. Like early, I mean like, in, what? like, like what? early on, like I mean groups like I, I'm not even gonna say, but it's it's groups, it's artists that were early on and they sounded, they were bad. You and know what I mean? They're, now they're now this now you wouldn't. It's night and day. You'd be like, what the fuck? And have they come back on? Yeah, a million times. Were they upset that their times. shit wasn't released? Nah, we got unreleased interviews. We got like an unreleased. Put it like this: we got an unreleased Too Short and Paul Mooney interview. Wow. So just imagine how nuts those interviews had to be that yeah. we didn't release. Them. Yeah. And this was early on. This was pre cancel culture, yeah. and we was like, this might be too much. Now. In hindsight, I might go back and watch those and be like, ah, oh, that wasn't that bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the time, we didn't put them out. But we got, a, we got man, we got so much shit in the motherfucking can. Oh, so the documentary yeah. is absolutely, positively, definitely coming. And it was interesting to see all of those, uh, all of those old clips pop up because it just, it just brings you back to a time. Like, there's memories attached to all of that shit. You're like, oh, shit. That was 2013. That was 2014. That was 2015. Yeah. Like, there was a lot going on in all of our lives that I just, I honestly just totally forgot about. Yeah. Like, yeah. think about that. When you have that much content that you just forget about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and then we got the nerve to wonder why people think you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's these fucking, it's these, it's these existences of you. It's almost like the multiverse for real. Yeah. Because it's like, yo, these people run parallel. Like, yeah. I can totally see you seeing that Magic Johnson clip and be like, I don't like this guy. By the way, I don't care what y'all say. I would still ask that question. No, that's day. funny. I don't think but I would. Probably, I would. I, I would ask differently. Why? I wouldn't say bitch. You didn't say bitch. I think I said it. No, I said bitch. Oh, okay. I did say, but I said Sick. bitch because I was putting my, my, my. Well, I if a putting, woman gave you AIDS. Exactly. I put myself in the mindset of that person, how you would be thinking in that moment. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you can't call the woman who gives you AIDS a bitch. I'm not saying she's a bitch. I'm just saying you would be angry in that moment and that's what you would be doing. You'd be blaming everybody but yourself. When you first got the information, did you ever say to yourself, it was that nasty bitch from Sacramento who did that? <laughs> Were you? You 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 think like that? No question about it. But I think what happens is you definitely go back and you start thinking. Yeah. But you 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 can't trace it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yo, you know what's so crazy? You can't trace HIV for real. What do you mean? Because you know, with COVID, you had contact tracing. You can't trace it back to. Taylor, what are you talking about? How many girls you have sex with, you can't. What does it matter? Taylor said no, it depends on how many girls you have you, sex with. You I'm know just, why you can't? Because why? they got the contact tracing with COVID because people have admitted they got COVID. Back oh, then, oh, motherfuckers didn't even know what it was. Yeah. It's like people yeah, were getting sick, dying. Yeah, Not everybody yeah. had like gotten diagnosed. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. as advanced as this. Yeah. But now you would know. Now yeah. you'd know. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know if some Listen, bitch. The moral of the story is <laughs> Sacramento. <laughs> and why Sacramento? So that, it was perfect. Everything was perfect. Like, you even believed it. You're like, I knew it was that bitch in Sacramento. Like, like, if you said like bitch from Beverly Hills, no, it wouldn't hit the you same. You know what I was trying to think? I was trying to think of Laker rival. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure you were. <laughs> sure you were, buddy. I've never been to Sacramento. That's probably why you don't have AIDS. Not that I remember. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> Shut up, man. But no, Angelie is going to get her own show. I think that's fantastic because who are you replacing Angela with? Well, I don't like the word replace. I think the word replace is disrespectful to Angelie because she's irreplaceable. 
You know what I'm saying? I think that the there Breakfast you go. Club, there you go. the that's Breakfast Club, up. seriously, the Breakfast Club that's is a club, fire, bro. You got that? <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> see, yo, that was, that was <laughs> nice. You mean? Yeah, that was fucking polished. And all I'm, that gonna get, shit, bro. I'm gonna get a girl from Sacramento, <laughs> man. We gonna get a girl. <laughs> No, but I do. I think she's irreplaceable. I think she's irreplaceable because what we built over the past 13 years can never be duplicated. To the left, to the left. So nobody can replace her. You know what I mean? (laughs) Now, the Breakfast Club is a club. So I want to expand the members of the club. You know what I mean? So we will bring in new members of the club. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to two things, right? (laughs) Moving the culture of radio forward because we all know radio took all the personality out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did that shit 15 years ago. There's this thing called PPM. PPM is a rating system that for whatever reason, they thought if you remove personality from radio, then make it a jukebox, people will tune in more. Stupidest thing that ever happened. Mm-hmm. You know what happened over the past 15 years? The, the rise of podcasts, they took over personality. The rise of uh, music streaming services took over the music. Yeah. And I always say, radio will never lead in anything again. And that's okay, right? Because... When it comes to personalities, it's podcasts. When it comes to music, it's the streaming services. When it comes to your live events, you know, live shows, it's the festivals. You know, when it comes to news, it's the fucking phone. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you're never going to hear such and such died yeah, yeah. over the radio first and left that person dies right there in front of the radio personality yeah. in that moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even then, somebody's going to record it and put it on Instagram before the person on the <laughs> radio gets to say it. Yeah. So with that being said, when you have somebody like Angela Yee who can go to middays, right? And she's a well-known personality. Now you bring star power to a day part. Think about growing up in New York, man. Every single day part had a star in it. Think about it. Mornings had stars. Middays had stars. Afternoons had stars. Nights had stars. There wasn't a time you could turn on a radio station in New York, Hot 97, BLS, whatever it was, and not hear somebody you absolutely positively know on the radio. So I think Angelique going to do that for middays is going to help move the culture of radio forward as far as personalities are concerned, and as far as what we're going to do, we're bringing in new energy. We're bringing in new blood, and hopefully whoever we bring in... Will you try a few people? You think you'll... Of he'll... course. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, listen, I'm not even... There's nobody even remotely in the running. Like, it's not oh, one of those wow. things like, oh, she's gone, now we're bringing in this person. Like, yeah. You might not see somebody in that spot for another year. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's my mentality. You know what I'm saying? Unless you something sure just, it's right. You got to make sure it's right. You're sharing energy with a person every fucking day. Mm. And you know as well as I do, motherfuckers are crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you don't realize how crazy somebody is until you got to work with them every single day. Female? I think so. Good yeah. for the energy. Yeah, you got too many dicks in there. I don't want another dick. I don't yeah. want another dick in there. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, that's not what makes... Uh... Woman and woman, but let's not get that into that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Andrew, I am so sorry. My bad. Thank you, you know. for being the progressive one always on this podcast. You're I am the progressive right. one. Just because the pe- you're absolutely right. You know what I mean? I'm so, a progressive. Dude. That's right. A penis could be in and still be a woman. Yeah, dude. That's what they tell us in 2020. You never sucked a lady's dick? And, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> we are. <laughs> what do you mean? You licked the clitoris. That's a, you know, that's a lady's dick, right? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I love it. And, and, and go back to the point I was making about radio never leading in anything again. Radio has always been the ultimate amplifier. And that is where we are in 2022 and beyond. Radio is going to be the ultimate amplifier to all of these other things that are already pre- that are already existing now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whether it's YouTube, whether it's podcasts, whether it's social media, radio is the ultimate amplifier for all of that stuff. And I encourage everybody in the radio business, all radio executives, if you have anybody in charge or any personalities who feel like they're waiting out a storm <laughs> when it comes to this YouTube stuff and this podcast stuff and this music streaming. If they're saying things like, oh, radio has had these challenges before, fire them. Yeah, it's over. Fire them. You know why you should fire them? Because they don't realize this is not a challenge. The world has changed. Yeah. It's completely changed. But I feel like with radio, you can so easily turn into podcasts. You yes. can so easily like put it out in different ways. You guys have had so much success with that with YouTube, right? Like, I think... I mean, YouTube, you could make the argument that YouTube is what made The Breakfast Club global. A hundred percent. There's no debate about it. 
Like, it's I, not, it's not I remember date. early in my comedy career, I was going to fucking like Sweden. People knew me from the Breakfast Club. It's not a debate. It's absolutely was YouTube. Absolutely was the iHeartRadio app. But once again, it's these platforms where people can access you, access you anywhere. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> if you have personalities who are not using those platforms, you got to get rid of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we live in a, 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 a world where they used to say, if you build it, they will come. Mm. No. You got to build it. And then you got to meet people where they are. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. we're sitting here right now doing this podcast, but where's this podcast going to go in a couple of days? Everywhere. YouTube. It's going to go on social media yeah. and clips. It's already up on SoundCloud. Like, yeah. that's what you have to do. If you're not doing that in 2022 as a radio personality, you got to go. Yeah. And if you got executives that you work for at these stations and they're not thinking like that, they have to be thinking of radio stations like social media platforms. Mm. What, does, what, do, what do these social media platforms do all day long? What is that? They keep us engaged. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They keep yeah. us engaged. There's content on there that we're constantly looking at. And more importantly, we're, we're, we're commenting and we're retweeting and we're liking. and all. That's what radio has to be. And you can put the personalities on the air that can keep the phone lines going all day long. That can keep people engaged via social media all day long. You just got to get people that understand that side of the game. So I'm excited to see, you know, what happens, you know, in the future. Of, of, of radio and once I'm happy to be at, at, at the forefront of creating, you know, whatever that, that, that change is going to be. Are there going to be some changes with Breakfast Club, you think, in terms of structure? What do you mean structure? I don't know. Like the way that you make the show, like, are you? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> when you bring in new energy. Yeah. I'm Listen, man, I'm all about ripping up playbooks. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't, you can't keep running the triangle offense in 2022. Yeah. yeah like yeah. that shit may have won you chips in the 90s, early 2000s. That shit can't win you chips now. So, yeah, I'm yeah. all for, you know, bringing in new people with new ideas, new energy, and let's, 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 let's figure it out. Yeah. I think that's, that's the only way to constantly keep evolving and constantly keep growing. And does that like excite you, the challenge a bit? Very much so. Yeah. Like, 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 like very, very, very much so. Like, I actually look <laughs> forward to it. If I was, the boss, mm -hmm. if I was Thea, okay. what I would do is I would tell Angela to say that the Breakfast Club will be nothing without her because <laughs> I know how to get you going. And then you would see like psychotic Charlemagne and... Uh, I don't need no help getting going. No, 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 no. But when you have uh, when you have a point to prove, <laughs> that but but no, I feel like I always tell my host, don't think for one second that I didn't spend at least an hour this weekend watching all the ops videos. Ooh, watching, I, watched, I, love I, watched, I watched I watched I watched all the ops videos. I love you know why I watched all the ops videos because that's why I was glad that you know that. When, when, when we put that tweet out and the tweet was, you know, the Breakfast Club, as you know, it is over. I love people being excited about that. I love people like, yes, finally. Because yeah, yeah. you, you couldn't beat us on your own. Mm. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't beat us on your own. Yeah. So you're happy that, you know, we're disbanding in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, and I saw a lot of people even trying to make it out to be negative. Like, Angelique is going to get way more money. Mm -hmm. She's going to get her own show. And here's something else. This is something that happens in white radio all the time. It doesn't happen in black radio too often. The reason it doesn't happen in black radio too often because you don't see too many shows in black radio stick along long enough for this to happen. Mm. I, I grew up listening to Tom Joyner. Tom Joyner had cast changes. I grew up listening to Doug Banks. Doug Banks, God bless the dead, he Stern. had cast changes. Howard Stern, but he's white, you know what I'm saying? But Howard Stern I'm had cast Stern. changes. Mm. El he's Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> or Jewish. He's a, you know? he's a white Jewish guy. <clears throat> yeah. You're right. Yeah. Elvis Duran. Man, Elvis Duran. You know how many shows have come from Elvis Duran? Mm -hmm. That's true. Like Elvis, Elvis Duran has literally produced like four or five other shows. Carla and Anthony, Carolina and Greg T, his his old co-host. I can't even remember the guy's name now, but he's I think he's down in DC. He, he does his thing and he's got a big show in DC. Yep. So it's like this happens all the time in the culture of radio if you have a show that is around long enough to see it happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like these cast changes happen all the time. I think that we're not used to it in our in our culture. Like in, in Breakfast Club is what what other radio show did you see start in a generation and you got to see through for 13 years? I just thought of something. Yes. You know how streaming is incredibly popular right now? Yeah. Like we're going through like the streaming revolution mm -hmm. too, right? Which, you know, people are streaming on Twitch, they're streaming on YouTube and people love this live feel 
They love the fact that this is happening in the moment. They love the fact that anything could go wrong. It raises the stakes. You say something naughty, it's even crazier. Yeah. This is something you've said that you love a lot. That is radio. Absolutely. So I'm curious as to why The Breakfast Club and other radio stations aren't just meeting the people where they are, going on Twitch, going on YouTube, going on all these places that are live streaming and give them the live streaming content that they already crave. I mean, we're already because we, we, we are. You just get it from the iHeartRadio because we're live every morning. Right, but if the if not as many people are on the iHeartRadio app that are on Twitch that are on YouTube, and you're already going to put the content there, like to me, I'm like it's a no brainer. You can run your ads, whoever you run your ads, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you might as well just meet the people where they already are, and they love that feeling. And you guys are already the best at it. Yeah, that's more audience. But we we, we used to try that. We tried that with uh, we tried that with live live interviews once. We went live on YouTube to do live interviews. That's not safe. Well, I wouldn't do it for interviews. I would do it when it's you guys in the room. Yeah. Because you're not, you're, you're live, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more audience, but you know, I think one thing people will get fucked up about radio is like, uh, and you can look this up. This is Google, whatever the fuck, do your Googles. Uh, there's no audio platform that has more reach than radio. Like 98% of the country still listens to radio yeah. every day. Yeah. Now, I will say I think radio has the most reach, least impact, right? Because it's just on. It's just on. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're so used to the radio that it's just background noise. Yeah. Now, you might have a show, like I said, like like us, The Breakfast Club, where in the morning you're actually listening. Yeah. But throughout the rest of the day, you're just like, eh. Let me see what's on. I'm like, yeah, or you just got it on. You know what yeah. I mean? For whatever reason. Like, it, it's just a, a habit. And it's I, a good habit. Dude, I if I'm, I don't know, man, I would really look into that streaming you would be the first radio show that actually is doing your streaming because that's what radio has always been it's yeah. been a live stream you're yeah. tuning into the live stream now the interviews are another thing you have to cut out some things or package them in a certain oh, way they so many artists will get fucked up exactly oh so you're, you're protecting the artists in that regard and that's cool and then those can go out on youtube and go other different things yeah. but the morning like yo i could just watch charlemagne live in the moment as this is happening i could do that or i could watch some guy play video games i think yeah. i'm gonna watch that charlemagne guy yeah, I'm, I, I would. Yeah, I'm with you. It, it would work for jocks, just not for the artists. I'm gonna tell you something. And when I go back over old footage, man, of the Breakfast Club, crazy. Let me tell you something about that gay slur, bro. <laughs> Wild. That gay slur just died, bro. Not from us, but from artists. They, yeah, they. That gay. I'm talking about when I say that gay slur just died. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about that shit just in the last three years. Yeah, yeah. People started realizing I we shouldn't be just saying this shit out loud. Yeah. Like that shit. I'm watching. I'm like, what year was this? Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. groups that like, I'm talking about even the new guys, like yeah. the new guys were letting it fly. fly. Yeah. And you know, we were, I, we were taking it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they don't know no better. Yeah. And, I, and, and when I'm watching, I'm like, I remember when I told such and such, Hey, and I said it in the moment, I'm letting you know, we taking that out. Because I understand the context you was using it in. <laughs> and they don't know. But that. the Alphabet Boys will not. <laughs> <laughs> and Alphabet Days will not. I'm sorry. I didn't, mean to call y'all. I didn't mean to call y'all boys. I just, Alphabet Days will not. You know what I mean? So, yes, that word just, when I say that word just went out of style. The, the rainbows. That's what, <laughs> that's what, that's what Grand Wizard calls them. What, the rainbows? The rainbows. The rainbows are coming from blah, blah, blah. <laughs> The rainbows are coming. <laughs> yeah, that shit kills Oh, me. man. Best this, Instagram page, man. I'm telling you. Grand Wizard chat word I can't say. I, I love I love the ops, too, that say things like, you know, like like years ago, they say things like the Breakfast Club was over. Yeah. But then, you know, all we did was kept giving you great content and, you know, eventually became part of, like, like actual American history because of our interviews with politicians yeah. and stuff like that. Then we ended up in the Radio Hall of Fame. Not once did they say they were wrong. Yeah. over the last five, yeah. six years. But yeah. Angela Yee's leaving. Now they're like, yeah. see, I was right. Like, I mean, it's easy about? to like predict the demise of something because everything comes to an end. Everything. So I mean, It's the <laughs> easiest thing. Like, I know I see a lot of people do this, but the easiest thing in the world is to be like, oh, it's not going to work out. Now you want to impress me, say, say, this is going to fall apart in three months. Yeah, yeah. Put a time, Put a time, on, time it. on it. Exactly. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I, I don't love those predictions, like that everything is going to nothing predictions because... All you have to do is just wait it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you either die or it happens. Would you add one person or two people to Breakfast Club if it was you? Mm-hmm. More Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> would you, would you I'm just saying what I like. So I wouldn't want to add more voices. I mean, look, it's, you know, it's different for me. Like, 
you know, with flagrant, I love our dynamic when we're all just yeah. hanging out. And then when we have a guest, it still works. If we have two guests, it's a lot of people. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of people. Yeah, when yeah, we have yeah. one guest, it is, there's still a lot of people, but at the same time, everybody can chip in and they have their own like perspective and voice. I think that's yeah. very, very important. But the hang, when it's just us, yeah. is awesome. Like that's what I like. But see, that's what I like. I need that to your point. I do need. I like that challenge. I need to be in a room where, like, that's why I love doing brand news. We get to exchange ideas. Yeah. And, you know, like debate and shit yeah. like that. That's why I like even doing hell of a week because you like you got three yeah. different people on the panel. Everybody going at it. Like you know, what I mean, I like shit like that. Now, hell of a week's perfect example. So there's three other people that you got to listen to them, hear what they have to say, hear their perspective which is time for me to not hear your perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and how do you balance that? I like I like when I put my perspective, and that's what we've been doing on Hell of a Week. I put my perspective out there and people debate. Your pers my perspective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think so, structurally that's better. Yeah. Because we're tuning in for your, in, your things mm -hmm. that you're going to say because we think they're going to be funny and interesting. And then seeing these like smart or funny people bounce off of those. Yeah. That can create some. Yeah. And it's the mixture, too. Like, I like the mixture on Hell of a Week. And I guess it's a formula, right? It's a comedian. Yeah. It's a personality. It's somebody from the political world. Yeah. Like that's how every show has been. That's how I have, I want every show designed. You yep. know what I mean? On purpose. And having different energy in every week. Like, this week, we got, uh, who we got this week? We got Flame Monroe. We got, uh, huh? Issa. Issa, right? God damn it, Taylor. I'm getting to that. Jesus Christ. You see her? See, you the open your mouth. The shortest person always stepping on things. You open your mouth. See what happened? That's why you didn't know about Angela. Because you would have told everybody. <laughs> you told everybody. She got a point. Andrew got a whole point. Just saying. <laughs> I'm starting with the panel. Panel is Flame Monroe. And then Issa Rae is our one-on-one -on -one guest. I mean, listen, man. The thing about the show, the show is it's been doing really well. And, like, you know, people are requesting to come on. So that's 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 all you can hope for. Plus, I think, man, I didn't even, I didn't even think about this going into this season. but Yo, there's no Jesus and Mero. There's no Samantha B. There's no Conan. No Samantha B. What are we going to do? But I'm just saying, like, there's three. Those were platforms that people would go on to promote their shit. Now those yeah. places don't exist. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like. So there's more. Yeah. But these people are coming on because of their relationship with you. And they yeah, they yeah. like what you do and they want to be involved in that. Yeah. And it's a, and it's a, a, a much better time slot. It's yeah. Thursday nights after the Daily Show. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, oh, yeah, you know what? That is a good spot yeah. for us to go and, you know, promote whatever we're okay, promoting. Okay, so you got a few people you really respect on the pod, but uh, on the show. Yes. It's hard. Uh, Yo, did you see that shit Skip Bayless said about LeBron James' son, man? Son, that was crazy, bro. Am I overreacting? Yeah. I mean, no. <laughs> you don't even know my opinion. <laughs> like, listen. Hey, Bronny, impressive, but your dad would have dunked it left-handed. You sure got away with it, though. I don't even know what the you sure got away with it, though, means. Meaning he wasn't criticized for not dunking it left-handed. Why? Who gives a fuck how he dunked it? I actually thought the right-handed dunk was cool. I didn't know what hand it was. It was just an awesome dunk. Yeah, who, it was an incredibly athletic play. I think he just uh, understands that his role is to hate on LeBron and the, the James family. What, is it generational hate? I God think. damn. Yeah, see, I, I don't like the shitting on the kids that's thing. all i'm saying yeah, yeah, if yo like if he was 18 and he was in the league do your thing skip yeah but the kid is 17 years old in high school why yeah yeah, yeah. why yeah like, you can't have that much hatred for lebron and what did lebron do to skip bayless that skip bayless hates lebron james that much yeah i don't know i got a theory go i got a theory give him tons of ratings that's what <laughs> yeah that's really there's, do, a lot, yeah. 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 there's a lot of lebron haters out there there's a lot of people who don't like lebron and Skip represents those people. So anything that he can say that's anti-LeBron. I thought it was because Skip loved Michael Jordan so much. No. And being that people think LeBron is close to Jordan, which I don't. That's just my personal opinion. Being that he is, I guess, I, I still think Kobe's the closest to Jordan. But people think LeBron is close to Jordan. So I think it's almost like he's protecting his guy by trying to shit on LeBron and downplay LeBron. By the way, whatever you want to say about that grown-ass man... LeBron James, do your thing. But to do that to his 17-year-old son, no, that's whack. It's whack. That's whack. And listen. Leave the kids alone, bro. And I, I would love to know how LeBron feels about this because that is his son. But also, LeBron been dealing with that kind of scrutiny since he was 17. So, you know, yeah. He sh yes, I'm sure he'll still come to the defense of Bronny because nobody was there to protect Bron in that way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But Bronny got his dad.
as he should. Mm. So LeBron has never responded to Skip in 20 plus years, which, by the way, is one of his most impressive stats that we don't talk about enough. He's never responded to Skip? I've seen, I, I, look, I looked up two tweets, bro, and the two tweets weren't even in response to anything Skip said about him. It was somebody asking him about them. And he was like, yo, Stephen A and Skip are good at what they do. I don't agree with them all the time, but, but they're good. They're good TV. Then somebody asked him about Skip. He was like, I don't know anything about Skip. I never met him a day in my life. He makes for great TV. That was it. Mm. Never any response about Skip saying he's not clutch his game. I haven't, I, if they're out there, please school me, send them to us. I haven't seen any. Mm. That's a very impressive thing to have that goddamn mosquito biting at you every motherfucking and year and not bite back. And that's the best thing that he could possibly do. Not, not say react. nothing? Yeah. That's going to drive Skip crazy. But when it comes to your son, do you say something? Do you that's put where some, it gets crazy, Do you put man. Savannah on him? Because that's Mama. Mama Bear oh, ain't playing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Put Savannah on Mama Bear might come for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Grandma might come for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mavin Rich might come for you now. Yeah. The king might not say nothing. But you got to let the king the dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now you're playing with the, 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 the hands to the throne. Look, you can't play with the kids, bro. Once the kid turns 18 and he's in college and he's an adult... Say whatever you want. Yeah, they don't even talk about high school sports on these shows. Yeah. So what's the point? Don't do that to him now. Yeah, I, for whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe I, it's... Yeah, I, I think that we naturally are a little bit more protective of kids. Yeah. Because they don't have, like, the emotional development to handle this kind of stuff. I think one of the things most impressive about LeBron is that, like, he hasn't gotten in trouble. Like, he's had tons of scrutiny, but he hasn't, like, done something fucked up. Never. You know, never. And one, one day we're going to look back and we're going to realize that how big of a part of his legacy that was. bro. But I feel like the Ball brothers got a lot of flack when they were in high school coming up because of their father. Oh, they got a lot of criticism. I, don't remember yeah. that. I, I believe so. I don't remember them in high school. I do remember in high school. They went over to Lithuania. There was there was a lot of attention that was brought on them. That is true. That's a good point. But you play in pro. Like I started hearing about Lonzo uh, we and hearing, Melo, and when they we were, were they were pl playing pro ball. Yeah, but we were hearing about them in high school if they were going to be good, and but that's fair. Yeah, that's fair critique. Like that right there is just needless criticism. Like they always say you shouldn't have needless criticism because you got to remember that jealousy destroys from within. That's just a needless critique because he starts off with impressive, but your dad would have dunked it left handed. That's like, but I thought you don't like your, his dad. You know what I'm saying? Like so. To a 17-year-old, yes, I think that Taylor's asking, is that a bad thing? To critique a 17-year-old like that only because you really don't like his pops? Yes, I think that's whack. Because that's that's uh, that tweet is just rooted in hate for LeBron. <clears throat> yeah. That don't have nothing to do with Bronny. And Bronny yeah. should not have to bear the sins of his father in that way. Because, by the way, Bronny ain't committed no sins. Yeah. Skip just does not like him for whatever reason. And I'm going to tell you what else makes it fucked up. Skip ain't got no kids. Really? Yeah, that's right. So it's like for me, I'm like, I'm going to do one to others. You would have them do one oh, to you. So if, if he had kids, he would never. That's right. Because that's what I'm saying. If you had yeah. kids, you wouldn't even play with nobody like that. Yeah. What they say, play with my kids. I'm going to smile on my mugshot. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's mm. They say, play with my kids. I'm going to smile that's on my mugshot. Right. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So you can't play with people's kids like that, man. But yo, yeah. I, I mean, Skip is like, he's like, he's like North Korean about it. <laughs> like you know how like you know how like, you know how like if you if you do a crime in North Korea like they punish like three generations of your family yeah, yeah. like he's like fuck everyone James bro fuck King James fuck the real King James <laughs> like Trinidad you know, James Trinidad, Trinidad James, James, James gonna get Rick, it like, Rick James, James all Jameses can get it James yeah. Brown yeah. <laughs> right. James Bond James oh fuck, fuck he, nah nah he wouldn't shit on James Bond. <laughs> yeah, he loves James James Bond white right color yeah, yeah, yeah. he he, 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 he does have a habit. He does, there's a pattern. I name the white person Skip goes at, and I'm not saying Skip's racist. Yeah, I'm just saying he don't go at white people the same way he does his black athletes. Is that true? I haven't you, seen it. Do you think there's and just he, and, more of the uh, one? <laughs> and he bigs up the white mediocrity. <laughs> like he's the only guy I still think Tim Tebow can come right now and win a fucking Super Bowl for a, a team. Oh really? Yes. Well, he knows his he knows his demo then. <laughs> you know what I mean? He knows it was, he knows it's there to watch the game. Skip fucking bailless, man. Yeah. And, and 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 the other thing I don't like about this is it just reeks of desperation. Yo, it's wild corny. It's bro. reeks like, of desperation. Leave the kids alone. It man. reeks of desperation. Like, you know, the last thing Skip did that really, really hit was the Russell Westbrook shit. 
But that's only because Russell responded. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he was right. <laughs> and that shit goes, bro. Russell Westbrook. <laughs> yo, Russell Westbrook is fire. The only way <laughs> Russell Westbrook can prove him wrong is to go out there and ball out that shit. Exactly. You know what I mean? But last year, by the way, that somebody black wrote that for Skip. Bro. Yeah. That's a black insult. Like, <laughs> even his name is black. <laughs> Skip, <laughs> like if you like, yo, my my boy Skip's coming to the to, to the party. You'd be shocked to see that step you'd be a like, white man walking. Yeah, like you, it, the camera would start at the Jordans. You'd be like, okay, yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> and then it just starts going up. I want to know like, what Skip and Lil Wayne be talking about. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Like, why why, why does Lil Wayne go over there and hang out? I don't know. Why I do you I want to know. Like, why? What maybe he's fuck? a good hang. Maybe Skip's a good hang. You think? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. You should have him on Breakfast Club. I would absolutely have Skip Bailey. That'd be Breakfast fun. Club. It would be. It would be. I don't think he travels, though. Wait, he's really? 70, bro. Yeah, but he's working out every single fucking day. Yeah, I ain't day. never seen Skip on the East Coast, ever. So he just does his show from... I'm just making up shit. I don't fucking know nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just spitballing, man. It's a fucking pod, bro. <laughs> don't, do don't, do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Shall we pay a bill? Let's pay some bills, right, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Hold <laughs> on. Man, this is stupid as shit. This can't be real. What? <laughs> Wait, what is that? Wait, what is that? Oh. Man, stop it! Hold on, yo, <laughs> yo, on, listen, me, man. What is it? What is it? Van just sent me this tweet, man. Somebody said we got to be ready for the next era of information because of this edit. We got to insert this, but this is something from CNN. And it's Kamala Harris, look, Vice President Kamala Harris talking to Aaron Burnett. And the lower third is should women give head to get ahead? Okay. <laughs> I think we should. Yes. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. It's really difficult to <laughs> when you had if you're just like if you don't gulp it down immediately, it starts to bend. <laughs> yes. and, and then, you know, the little thing catches it. And then, you know, but, so we got to kind of perfect that one a little bit more. <laughs> so you <laughs> to rely on. I mean, we got we got it. Yeah. It's, it's a process, right? You don't just do it. It's a process. <laughs> what the fuck, yes. man? I mean, look. Yo, I'm we got to discuss this when we come back. Because I have, I have a thing about this misinformation shit. Um, most in course. Uh, salute to most in course, man. Summer is full of official events like weddings, graduations, and annual 4th of July barbecues. But everyone knows the best parts of summer are the unofficial ones. This summer, Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial, celebrating those moments that truly make summer chill. The first day of summer is officially June 21st. Unofficially, it's whenever it's warm enough to enjoy a beer on the patio. The weekend is officially Saturday and Sunday. Unofficially, it's Friday afternoon, too. It's Thursday for me. I don't know what y'all talking about. Summer is officially the warmest time of year. Unofficially, it's the chillest. Okay? Listen, man, I'm very upset that summer's about to come to an end, but it does not have to come to an end. The summer is all about the weather. So until it is actually freezing out here and you got to pull hoodies and coats on, it's still summer. There's only one beer out there that's literally made the chill. OK, and that's good for all of these times. And that's cause like the mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open the cause Light. it's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Cause Light is cold layered, cold filtered and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. Perfect for a moment to unwind. Summer chill starts with cause Light. Make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch. Fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or LA. Enter the win at causelight.com slash idiots. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 8 15 22. Game ends 9 6 22. You gotta be 21 and older. Void with prohibited for rules. Visit causelightsummer.com. Celebrate responsibly. Cause Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. You want to do Squarespace show too? Hell yeah, guys. This episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all in one platform for building brand. And growing your business online, stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. I'm telling you, if you do not have a place on the internet, you do not have a real business. The, the internet is the marketplace now, so make sure that you get yourself a place 
there where people can consume your content and purchase your products. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your businesses and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying for your brand ingredients like site colors and logos. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every single send and use those analytics and insights to grow your business. So, Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. Right now, head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Let's do some church announcements. What you got, Schultz? Yo, um... You capitalist pig. Is I'm, this I'm a capitalist <laughs> pig. Man, you man, you man. capitalist pig. I need more money. <laughs> Not need it. No. I, it's back up for sale. It stops this Sunday, though, for real. Unless the oink come back. <laughs> the oink come back. You know what I'm saying? Oink, oink shower time? <laughs> that oink, oink shower. No, no. It stops this Sunday. Uh... Uh, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to go buy it, buy it there. Uh, support me, uh, theandrewschultz.com. You go get it. Um, it's also streaming on every fucking illegal streaming site right now. So <laughs> you can also pirate that bitch. Uh, if you can't afford it, pirate it. It is what it is. You can't stop things from getting on the internet these days. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. what fucking happens. Yeah. And if you don't want to pirate that shit, I'm sure one day in the future, I'll put it up on my YouTube so you can watch it then. But uh, thank you so much, everybody who supported. Thank you so much for everybody who spread the word and made it such a success and allowed me to take my wife to Italy. Hey. <laughs> Grazie. Uh, I, got a, I got a few announcements. Uh, number one, make sure you watch Hell of a Week this week. Yes, uh, sir. Every big Thursday one. night. Big one. Big one. Every Thursday night, 1130 on Comedy Central right after The Daily Show. Uh, and make sure you stream us on Paramount+. Plus. Make sure you subscribe to the Hell of a Week podcast. Uh, go get some of 85. That is uh, a new Audible original um, produced by my man Chris Morrow. Uh, distributed by SBH Productions. That's myself and Kevin Hart's company at, um, at Audible. Salute to everybody that's been enjoying Summer of 85, too, man. Very, very, very compelling story, uh, the Summer of 85 is. Make sure you go get Anita Kopak's book, Shallow Waters. It came out in paperback uh, last week, uh, August the 9th. If it's a love letter to Yimmy Ya, for everybody who bought the hardcover, thank you. Uh, for everybody who enjoys paperbacks more than hardcovers, thank you for going to grab the paperback, uh, Anita Kopak's Shallow Waters. In the Black Effect Podcast Festival, was happening Sunday, August 28th. We have to postpone it. The reason we have to postpone it is because it is a lot of different scheduling conflicts. And if I can't present, you know, the lineup the way it's advertised, then, you know, I just want to wait until we can do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? For everybody who's bought tickets because they wanted to see Lil Duval, you know Lil Duval's situation. You know yep. what I'm saying? You know, he he's in a car accident. And then, you know... We had All the Smoke, uh, 85 South Show, uh, Reasonably Shady, and, you know, a, a, a couple of those individuals, you know, had scheduling conflicts. So you might have had one, not the other, uh, you know, one and a guest. And I don't want to do that, you know, to the people. So I would rather wait and you know we're going to we, we postponing it and we're going to announce the later date soon. I don't have the website. We have we have what's the website, Taylor? It's so. Is it blackeffect.com? I thought it was something else. Black Effect. Oh, blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. You can go to that and uh, you'll get the, the new date when we announce the due date and all of that good stuff. So uh, thank you to everybody who purchased tickets. Sorry. It's, and I don't know why people are still <laughs> hitting us up. I thought we announced that it's not happening uh, Sunday, August 28th, but we will announce the new date uh, very, very, very soon. Now. Let's get back to the show. Let's do it. Um, it's a no. it's a hard thing to. Mm -hmm. A festival is an incredible undertaking. You ain't got to tell me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And it's like 
It's Getting also, that many people who have insane schedules insane to come to schedules. one to- one place at the same time and man is is mind bogglingly difficult. I want to tell y'all more just from a, a, a legal perspective, but I don't want to say too much. But boy, you and this is not from the artist. This is from other entity. You get cease and desist from the weirdest places. Wait, really? What do you for mean? The weirdest, for the weirdest, the weirdest things. Wait, what do you mean? I tell you off the air. It's just weird. It's just it's just strange. But uh, we are postponing it to another day. But you're right. Like to bring all of that talent together. Every one of these one people place. has an incredibly busy schedule. Man. Like, think about that, right? So you have 30 different people, whatever it is, who are all jam packed and have no time whatsoever, mm-hmm. right? And then you're basically saying, hey, we need all of you to be available this one day. We don't even got all of them. <laughs> you got like 10 podcasts. You know what I mean? I think yeah. Black Spec has like 27, 28 podcasts. We, we're going to do 10 this time, 10 to 10 another time. But listen, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I'm not tripping. You know, it's the right thing. That's right. The right thing. If we can't do it right, I'd rather not do it at all. Yeah. And, you know, because to me, that's just stealing money. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. just, that's just taking money and like, like not giving people what they actually paid for. You know, you know, one way I think there's a, a cool way to go about these things is like starting small with like, it's one day guaranteed. These are the people that can be there and then selling that. And then if other people can add on building out outside of that, oh, now yeah, I don't yeah, understand yeah. how you like do that financially. Like I don't understand the metric for that. I thought we, that's all we were doing was one day. Oh, right, right. Yeah, we right, were doing right, we were right. doing one day. It was ambitious, though. That's a lot of talking one day. <laughs> right? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a festival, though. So it was food. It's, it's yeah. going to be food. It's going to be drinks. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And we're going to be breaking it up because it's going to be like seminars in between the way you can. It's, it's going to be the business of podcasting panel and the women of podcasting panel because women are so underrepresented in the podcast space. Yeah. But not at the Black Effect, baby. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like we were going to have all of that. So, <laughs> yeah, it was. It's, 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 it's going to be good when we get it together why the do you right think way. women are so underrepresented in the podcast space because they be talking all the goddamn fucking time <laughs> while they just add a reporter <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> why, why do you think that is that they don't just put a fucking recorder around them <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna answer this question yeah I'm gonna answer this question as a man yeah or as a person who identifies as a man yeah um I, I I'm not sure women support each other the way they should, bro. Mm. I mean, I, you know, it's, it, Bill Burr has a joke about it in regards to the, the WNBA. You know, WNBA, but it's it, it, it's some truth. It's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. Because with the number of women in the world, WNBA should be full every game, right? Yeah. And it should be women walking around in WNBA jerseys all the time. Yeah. I own two WNBA jerseys. I just got to fire one too, bro. Which one? As soon as I get the shoes to wear, Where's with it, you got that Britney Griner jail jersey? No, nah, I didn't get the Britney. <laughs> I got I got Asia Wilson. <laughs> She's supposed to be coaching in jail, though, they said. Is that right? Yeah, they said they're going to let her coach. They're That's fire. Coach. Which I, now, I've got a whole other conspiracy. What, 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 what? I think they was like, they just She's keep too her good to let her go yeah, back. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We got to I mean, keep her. She would be, the most fire thing that she could do right now is be like, don't do no prisoner swap. Like... I don't do, don't negotiate mind. with these motherfuckers. I am like, trade me. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Trade <laughs> me. I know y'all don't usually care about WNBA trades, but I yeah. want this one to be the blockbuster. Get jo- me up out of here. Brogan had a funny thing. Maybe we discussed it already, but he had, the, had an interesting thing about it. He's like, there's so many people locked up for weed in America. We do not give a flying fuck about. Bro, I've been saying that for two weeks. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, yo, Joe Biden, well, well, let me put the button on the point about the podcast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't think, I, I think with all, with the, with the number of women in the world, like these podcasts should be through the roof. And by the way, the ones that that are successful have a high audience of women. The horrible mm. decisions, the the guys we fuck, the call her daddies, you yeah. know, like uh holding code, Ebony K. Williams does phenomenal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, who else is I mean, all of, by the way, all the podcasts that are led by women do well yeah. when they actually get the support yeah. of women. You know what I mean? Because one thing about it, wherever women are, men will follow. Mm. That's why when I used to throw parties back in the day, you let mad women in the party for free. That's why all of these clubs do women free before 11. Because yeah. a guy, when a guy sees that it's a bunch of women somewhere, they going to pay whatever. Yeah. So wherever the women... Yo, do you understand the WNBA games could be the greatest place to meet people <laughs> if women if supported women. the WNBA? Yeah, if, but sometimes it's not the women that, that um, you're trying to get with. 
<laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you, uh, what are you talking about? I don't know. You know what I mean? Explain. Sometimes it's Spell not the it demo. Sometimes it's not the demo. What do you mean, <laughs> man? When you say demo, you are you stressing the D for a reason? Huh? I'm just saying, like, you got a bunch of chicks pulling up at the strap, hanging out their shorts and shit. Got you. That's still, <laughs> by the way, that's still the D. <laughs> <laughs> That's still the D, baby. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, you know, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so it's I like, get what you're saying. If it was maybe, if it was maybe like, if hotter chicks were in, that's the stereotype. Though the stereotype is that like, what the WNBA what, is full of lesbians. That's I didn't not say true. WNBA was full of lesbians because WNBA player dudes aren't good looking. WNBA player dudes, what like I mean. NBA players. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I call the NBA the WNBA dudes. Okay. That's what I call <laughs> nah, NBA players ain't good looking, bro. They're just rich and fucking tall. NBA players are good, are better looking than just guys. <laughs> Taylor, come here, come on, come on, Taylor. Tell us who you. Tell us like, who you, NBA players ain't got nothing on podcasters. Keep it a buck. Yeah. Keep it who, a who, buck. Who's, that, who's, the, who's the guy? Say a second. Who? Oh, God damn. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, what the oh. fuck? Taylor yeah, just went through the wall. Holy Taylor shit. just went through the wall, yo. Holy Taylor shit. Taylor just went right God through the wall, yo. God damn, Taylor. Taylor, chill out, yo. Holy chill out, shit. Taylor. What was that God about? God damn it, bro. You done broke the therapist's couch. Yo, she you got did. to go. <laughs> I got to add another $50 to your session for that one. Yeah. Holy shit. Taylor. That was great. Crazy Taylor, that was crazy. You gotta Chill control out. that shit, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you can't Dave. just be dropping that shit, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just, you can't just, you can't just you can't, Taylor. You can't just be dropping that shit, Taylor. You gotta control that. Yeah, shit. Control that shit. center of gravity. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> you just admit I'm thicker than you. Then, no, you're right? not. No, 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 right. no, come on. No, don't hate. Um, Taylor I was... got so mad that day when I told him my measurements. Oh, word. What you don't got him? She heard that 41, 36, 43, and was in tears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You. you don't got it? She can't fuck with this. Relax. <laughs> um, I would say back in the day, Michael Jordan was very nice looking. Um, He's all right. He's all right. Iman Shumpert is very nice looking. Is he? Yes. He's a beautiful man. You trying to be the opposite of Channing Crowder, bro? Like you just who's purposely... Channing Crowder? You don't try Channing Crowder from the Pivot Thank Podcast? You. No, what do you do? <laughs> oh, you got to insert this Taylor. Taylor, play this, play this clip, Taylor. Play this. Play this. Oh, Whoa, oh, God oh, damn, Taylor! Oh, Taylor, oh, Taylor, you can't control oh, that oh, shit today. Damn, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor can't control oh, her own Taylor. shit today. What the fuck, Taylor? God damn, Taylor, 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 if you can't control it, you got to lose it now, bro. <laughs> right? Yo, it's fact. Right? There's a saying. That shit got a mind of its own today. Bull in a chair. China shop. <laughs> You're a bull in a, a China. bull. You're a young bull in a You're China a young shop. Young bull in okay. a China shop. Um, yes, but to put a button on it, I just think women should support anything women driven more. Yeah, but what what if women just don't like female sports that much? That's true too. Maybe and maybe we got to accept that's that. True. And maybe that's not sexism. It's just y'all aren't really into it. Say again. I think men more you support watch tennis that. over the WNBA. Taylor says they watch tennis over the WNBA. Yeah, that's true. No, I you could be a gay tennis player. There's a lot of gay tennis players, bro. This guy is crazy. <laughs> right in that tennis that's why we that's why we watch that shit girl grabbing them balls throwing them up <laughs> what did we say we was going to talk about before we put a button on the women no it was Who somebody Channing before Crowder. Channing Crowder what did Channing Crowder it was say we was talking about during the women's yeah. shit we were talking about women playing tennis <laughs> play, play the chain and cry the shit till it Why comes do they back do up. that, yo? Why women are so extra? What do you yo, mean? Yo, relax, ladies. You the guys even... do that too. You never no, heard Arthur Ashe? Arthur Ashe used to let that shit go. Yeah, but Arthur Ashe. Hey! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you know where I was going? And hey, you just stopped me. Is that happened? Did you know where I was going? And you just stopped me, bro. Is that what just happened? Is that what just? 
happened right there. Oh. Is that what happened right there? He's just God, so stupid. Man. Hey! <laughs> let's, let's, let's play. Let's see what Channing Crowder, my guy. Salute to Channing Crowder, the Pivot Podcast, one of the best podcasts out. Him, Ryan Clark, and Fred Taylor. Let's listen to what he said to Denzel Ward. God damn it, Taylor. Drop on the goddamn Vaughn button, Taylor. Yo, remember when she fucking speared the couch? <laughs> like <laughs> Goldberg? That wasn't no spear, bro. That was, was God. That? No, that was uh, Raf- shit Rafiki used to do it. Rafiki used to jump on you with his ass. That's what that was. I thought you were talking about Rafiki from <laughs> you remember Rafiki? Lion King. I was no, like, what? That was his name. No, Rashiki. Rash- what was the big motherfucking Rakishi? name? He used to use his cheeks as a finishing move. Oh, Rikishi? E- Honda? Rikishi? Rikishi. Wait, that was his name? Rikishi. Yeah, Rikishi. yeah, sit on you with the thong out. But you are beautiful. <laughs> what you mean? Bro, like, you got pretty what? eyes. Like, you got good skin. <laughs> you got little highlights. Like, like no, no, no. But you a dog now. Like yeah. I watched you play. You a dog. But did you have to fight that? Like. When like you being beautiful, out, you, just, you just look, <laughs> you look so pleasant and nice. You know? But then you got to choke a bitch to sleep. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, do dudes try you when they see you? Be like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. This dude got you. You had to fight that? I mean, you the first dude that called me beautiful. Oh, you are. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond. Don't. Now, Channing, <laughs> they gave Channing a lot of flack for this. Why? I don't know. He just complimented his brother. Not only did he compliment him, yeah. it was a great segue into what I think is a great question. Which is Essentially, what? what he's saying is, because you're such a pretty boy, do people take you serious on the football field? You know what I mean? Are, you sca- are, are they scared of you? He do they think you're soft? On. He got a helmet on. You know what I mean? Nobody's really looking at him like that, you know? You don't think so? I don't know. Maybe. How pretty do you think he is? I like, mean, you don't look that striking <laughs> on the TV. Maybe in person. You know, some people you meet in person, you're like, yeah. oh. You know what I mean? And by the way, Channing is an official person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's nothing about Channing that is funny style in any way, shape, or form. So I don't even know why y'all trying to paint him with that, bro. He goes to the resorts, right? Doesn't he go he to... He goes to the Necker Resort. So he likes seeing guys naked already. <laughs> that's not true. I don't think that's the case. He's just at a Necker Resort. Um, you know? I just think he's at a Necker Resort. I Maybe like... he's so confident in his sexuality yes. that he can look at a guy naked, he can look at that guy and say he's attractive. That's what I don't understand. Like, if you like women, <laughs> why do you have to go out of your way to prove you like women? If I tell a person, I tell men that they look good all the time, but I'm doing it more so from a health perspective. You yo, know what I mean? This is stupid because <laughs> what well, you mean? You know, yeah, because I'll be like, yo, I'll be like, yo, I'll be like, damn, bro, you look good. Like, you know, like I said, Kevin Gates, I saw Kevin Gates a week ago when he came yeah. to Breakfast Club. I'm like, bro, you look good. You can tell he lost weight. Yep. His skin is glowing. His eyes look yep. clear. Yep. Like he's giving off a dope in a glow. Like you should compliment. I saw a take yesterday. Yeah. Like, bro, you look good, brother. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And you smell good. But yeah. did you say he was beautiful, son? I ain't say beautiful. Beautiful is like... Beautiful yo, is beautiful is a word. It is. I ain't never met a beautiful man. Me, personally. I'm not saying that they don't exist. You never met a beautiful man? No, nah, I never met a beautiful Come man. Come on, yo. What? I think... I don't think Morris is beautiful. He looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> she pointed at me and said, Morris Chestnut. I'm like, Morris Chestnut's not beautiful. He looks like me. He's <laughs> handsome. He's like a fine cognac. You know what I'm That's saying? Beautiful? That's uh, beautiful? What's wrong with that? Nothing. Beauty is in the eye Listen, of the beholder. There's, no, there's no better compliment when an old woman says you handsome. I'm talking about an old woman. I'm talking about 70 years old, 80 yeah. years old, because they know handsome when they see it. You oh, know what I mean? Shit. So when an older woman calls you handsome... Who is calling you handsome? Oh, man. Uh, every older woman I've ever known as 70 years old, 80 years old, 80 years old, they always call me handsome, right? And and what do you what do you think that is? You just got them... Me being handsome. Ripping? Huh? Nothing. <laughs> what difference between what? Handsome, hand, beautiful, beautiful is more of a mixed drink. Taylor asked me what's the difference between handsome and beautiful. Mm. Beautiful is more of a mixed drink. It's like a margarita. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, it's like, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A, it's fun. like a Shirley Temple is fun. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like being hot. Like what's yeah. hot? Handsome. Yeah. Handsome is that aged, fine kind. See, I think beautiful for tequila. women is handsome for men. Really? Like if you look at a woman, you're like, wow, you're beautiful. That's like saying to a guy, you are so handsome. Like if he said, to him, he was like, yo, you are handsome, bro. I think sexy is age with women. And even though sexy might sound like, um, I guess I guess sexy might sound like misogynist. He said, oh, man, she's sexy. It might, women might think you're objectifying them, but no, I'm not. It's just a certain sex appeal that comes when you get older. Like, Taylor can't even fucking walk. You know what I'm saying? 
yeah, but when she gets true. older, she'll know how to control that shit. She tried to sit down, just not fucking almost put a hole in the floor. That's not sexy. Yeah, sexy women true. know how to like a sexy woman know how to yeah, walk in the yeah, room. Yeah. There's an elegance. The ele- Ooh, that's the word. Yeah, elegance yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, they yeah, graceful. Yeah, yeah. Sit down. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sexy to me comes with age. Just that elegance that comes with age. Oh, see, we that's so weird. Like I, I sit. Sexy to me is like a young thing. I think it's hard for like really? an old woman to be sexy, but they can be beautiful. They can be elegant. But sexy is like, also there are girls that can be sexy, but they're not even that hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, almost yeah. every Latin woman is sexy. Even if she's not hot, she'll just find a way to be sexy. I get what you're saying. Because their, their mannerisms, the things they do, the they way they talk. Move, oh, what they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. sexy is almost like a personality trait. Yeah, man. You can If you don't know no better, you come to New York and lose your mind with them Latino mm-hmm. women. You lose your mind. Mm-hmm. Them little Latino women, bro. I, mm-hmm. I've heard some shit in my day, bro. What'd you hear? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard. I know what you like. Boy, let me tell you something. A Latino woman tell you that shit for everything. I'm talking about for everything. I know what you like. Whether it's food. Whether it's, I mean, just stupid shit. Wait, like, wait. really unbelievable. God damn. God damn. God damn. We need to. Uh, we need. We, we need, need a- Latin America to colonize the world. <laughs> Would anybody be upset about that? Like, is that the one culture that could just colonize it? Everybody would be like, no, this is kind of good. Like, this is awesome. We like, don't get, listen, by the way, we don't give Latin America enough credit, bro. For everything. Their food, their women. Fire, they, fire. Like, the culture, period. The yeah, dancing. they're the best. They're the best. Like, this, it's Who doesn't unbelievable. give them enough credit? They're the best. Mm-hmm. I don't think they get enough credit, bro. Who's not giving them the credit? Who's the best? You think African women are the best? Better than Afro Latinas. Mm. You get the African and you also get the Latina. Taylor don't even know what that is, bro. You don't even know what that is, bro. <laughs> come on, Taylor. You want, come, on. come here, Taylor. You know Taylor. I mean? Come, come here. Nobody can hear you. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You just be five fo fum over to the sofa <laughs> real quick and have a see. conversation. You got more control. Control. Break the studio, okay. please. More control. More control. Okay. There you She's go. thinking and- about it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Still ran into the microphone. (laughs) You had it. The ass got there, but then you couldn't control it. The back just lost itself. You ran right into the microphone. See, if you were Latina, you could control that ass. That's true. If you were Latina, you could control that ass. That's true. true. You're not Latina. With age, it'll get graceful. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with Taylor. She's going to get the gray edges. Yep. They gonna get the gray edges. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Then she's gonna really turn into auntie. Yep. And then she'll not control all that shit, man. At at right now, you have no control over it, Taylor. You the hope. An incredible hook, yo. Yeah. You, when you got to learn how to form, so true, you got to be dude. smart, Taylor, bro. When you bring that fucking brawn with the brains, yeah. you're going to be good. You know how, bro. like, you know how if you're right-handed and you, like, f- like try to brush your teeth left-handed, it's all, like, awkward or weird? That's how you walk. Yeah, like, fuck you. you. Fuck you. Yo, first of all, no one's doing that anyway. What do you mean? You say if we brush our teeth with the our left hand for right handed? You don't do that? You never brush oh, your teeth I do that all the time. Hand. I use my left hand all the time just to stay ampled, um, Fibious. <laughs> <laughs> what, to say what? <laughs> Ampli- ampli- <laughs> I do it all the time. I do, Amp- I do it all the time. Amphibious. <laughs> Listen, once the, well, listen, you gotta, once it gets there, bro, just let it come out. You can correct just yourself. Let it go. Yeah, yeah, let you know, it do it. Don't need to tuck the amphibian. Let the shit fly. Bro. You are amphibian, though. For real. <laughs> you are an amphibian. <laughs> what did but, we bring tail over here for? I don't know. No, because you were trying to say that that NBA players are even close no. to as handsome as NFL players. NFL players way better looking than NBA oh, I players. I love NFL players. More Same, than though. Players. So you think that you're beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> Him? Yeah. Yeah, he he has a nice face. You know what it is what makes men beautiful, I Money. guess, in a way? No. <laughs> but he has Houses, a, he has a very to Italy. <laughs> he has a very nice clean face. He don't have like a Sunni or nothing like that. What the or, fuck is a Sunni? Um a big uh beard. Holy shit. <laughs> that's Taylor. Philly. That's a Philly Sunni? For you. Like, yeah, that's what we call it. Oh shit. Like the Muslims, <laughs> like the Sunni and then the Shiites. Oh wow. Was that is that a bad no, they're just a, it's a second. Uh, that's what we say in Philly. Yeah. So. You got a Sunni. But in, <laughs> Yo, that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he has a nice clean face. Yeah. So just cleanliness of the face makes no, a guy good looking. That's and all And then probably, is. you know, I would say he's, he's handsome. I would say he's beautiful. Who's, Who's the most beautiful? beautiful? Yeah. As a man? Yeah. You uh, look at them, you're like, fuck. Tyler Leppy. 
He's beautiful. Who is Tyler? Oh, Tyler Levy, my man. Yes. Tyler. Oh Who's my that? God. He's on P Valley. Me and Tyler Ridiculous. did a movie together back in the day, a movie called Ringside. That was a really? wild set. Yeah, yeah. That was a wild set because, like, our trailers were next to each other and it was just like mad girls outside of all our both our trailers all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was <laughs> insane. <laughs> man, you are a liar and oh you've God, always you been a liar. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem here, yo? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what, is, what is wrong with y'all? It was insane, bro. Like, it was insane. It was wild like it that. It was wild, bro. Yeah, it was yeah, wild, yeah. I bro. feel you on that one, It was bro. wild. Let's pay some bills, man. <laughs> Guys, uh, this podcast has been brought to you by the best boners in the business. <laughs> okay? Blue Chew. Blowing backs out. All day, all night, whenever you need Blue Chew has got your back. Your lady deserves it. Your side chick deserves it. Your wife deserves it. Your mom deserves it. Give some to your dad. Okay? Blue Whoa. Chew. BlueChew.com. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Blue. You don't want your mom to get her shit split every once and again? I thought you were saying you want to split your daddy's shit. I no wasn't... way, dude. No, no way. Bro. But whatever. Yeah, it is dad, what it is. I'm not glizzy. judging. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get bricky, dad. <laughs> Yo, get bricky. Get bricky with it. Okay. Nah, 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 uh, nah, 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 Getting bricky with it. <laughs> Bluechew.com. You're going to get the first month free. All you got to do is go to Bluechew.com. Okay. Use that promo code IDIOTS. You got to pay $5 shipping. You get the best dick of your life delivered to your doorstep. Shit. You are welcome. Bluechew.com. Promo code IDIOTS. Use it. Enjoy it. Thank me later. Let's get back. Oh, no. What else we got? Well, we got Talkspace. You know, uh, oh. salute to Talkspace. When they say mental health is a journey, they mean it. That's why it's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every day. When you work on yourself, it brings positive changes in all areas of your life. The long-term effects of therapy can give you the tools to deal with challenges as they arise, strengthen your relationships, and give you a more positive outlook on life. There's no better time to invest in yourself than right now. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform that has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7 and they'll engage with you daily five days a week. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest in-the-in bank grade encryption technology to store client information and comply with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of the Brilliant Idiots podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. That's right. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code IDIOTS to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for the show. That's IDIOTS and Talkspace.com. Uh, so speaking of mental health, salute to Adrian Broner. He pulled out of his fight this weekend because he says he has to get a handle on his mental health issues. Uh, Gervonta Davis tweeted out, he is. I'm paraphrasing here, but he tweeted out how he's tired of people uh, using mental health to get out of these fights. He was like, these guys are just bitches. Who said that? Javante Davis. Tank. You want me to read the exact tweet so I don't misquote the brother? Tank said, Taylor's computer hates her. Who is who is trying to get... Yeah, I'm so... Who was getting out of the fight? What was the issue? Um, I think Tank was referring to Ryan Garcia because um, Ryan Garcia took a mental health break. Uh, I think it was late last year, early this year. Uh, and uh, Adrian Broner just took... Adrian Broner's supposed to fight this weekend. And then he said, I can't do it? He said he can't do it. He said he's got too much going on. He said he's... he's, he said he's, he's, he's basically, because of his mental health, he's pulling out of the fight. I think it's very, very, very unfair to try to gauge what's going on in a person's mind. Yeah, what, you know I what, I'm mean, saying? what does Adrian Broner have going on, going on? What do you mean? Like, what is he, what's happening in his life? Oh, but that's my point. We haven't seen Adrian fight in a while. Yeah, he needs this. That's what I'm saying. So for him to pull out, lets me know uh, there's something wrong. It's even more serious. That's what I'm saying. Gotcha. Adrian Broner said, look, look, look at the headline. Adrian Broner says, I'm going through mental health issues. Figueroa calls BS. I don't think you should do that to people. I, well, what's his weight? That's what I need to know. He looked like he was in shape when I saw him on um, Instagram. He hasn't fought, Broner hasn't fought in a year and a half. I thought, I feel, feel like it's longer than that. 33 years old, was scheduled to fight 32-year-old Omar Figueroa Jr. on the 20th. He says, I'm going through a lot at this moment in my life, but I ain't, but I ain't going to give up. I set some more goals and you, I ain't stopping until I finish what I started. But sorry to say this, but I'm not fighting August 20th, Adrian Broner wrote. 
unless I, if some somebody can show me something else, I don't see how people can be upset about him mm-hmm. doing this. Sorry to all my fans, but hashtag mental health is real, and I'm not about to play inside the ring. I've watched a lot of people die playing with their boxing career, and that is something I won't do. Just pray for me. I love the sport of boxing too much to not give up my give my all, and I feel like I came up short before because my mind wasn't 100. percent Hey, he's absolutely right. You listen, boxing is more of a psychological, mental game than it is a physical game. You're going to get your fucking head knocked off if you're not prepared. You know what I'm saying? So I don't. I'm not mad at him in any way, shape, or form, and I think it is really really unfortunate and unfair that people are saying they don't believe that he actually has mental health issues. Okay, so maybe he does have mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Maybe a bigger fight came along and he's like, all right, I got to dip out of this one so I can get that bigger one. I don't think there was any other fights out there for him. He was fought in a year and a half. Yeah, I thought he, I actually thought he was done with Showtime. I didn't know where we was going to see AB pop up. I thought you were going to see him pop up fight one of the Paul brothers soon or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel sorry for him. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. What? You talked about Biden and Joe. Oh, you talked about Joe Rogan and what he said about weed. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. I thought it was incredibly disrespectful for Joe Biden to come out and say the sentence that Brittany Griner received in Russia was unacceptable. When he created the bill that put people away for far longer. A few of them. Everybody always talks about the 94 crime bill, but there was yeah. the 88 crack laws. There was the 86 mandatory, eight, there was 86 uh, mandatory minimum sentencing laws. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, we live in a country where right now, if Joe Biden wanted to, don't need no votes, no mm-hmm. nothing. He could literally pardon every single person that is federally jailed for a nonviolent weed offense. Mm-hmm. He could pardon Every single body. This motherfucker's doing life in jail for an ounce and a half of marijuana right now. Mm. I think I was looking at the numbers. They say more people have been arrested on a federal level under Biden than like any president. What was the headline? I just, I literally just saw that headline today because I saved it. What was that? That makes sense though because what? It's weed is legal everywhere now. So they're not going to be arrested on a state level. They would only be arrested federally. Yeah, that's true. What was the headline? Where the fuck was the headline? I literally saw that shit earlier. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, L.A. Weekly said federal cannabis arrests jump 25 percent under Biden. My whole point is, man, when you live in a country where more more than half of the country has legalized weed in some way, shape or form, whether it's for medicinal, whether it's for recreational, to have people still locked up for marijuana in fucking America is ridiculous. And to be talking about what another country is doing and the unacceptable sentence that Brittany Griner has. What about the unacceptable sentences here in America? If I'm Joe Biden. You need this for the midterms, bro. Okay? Yeah. I'm pardoning every single body that's locked up federally for a nonviolent marijuana offense. Let them all out. Now, he's pardoned like 75 people. That's nowhere near enough. If the number that I'm reading is correct and it's like 30, 40,000 people wow. locked up, let them go. Pardon them. Especially if they're in states where legally marijuana, I mean, marijuana is legal now. Yeah, if they're if they're profiting off of marijuana, you can't keep Big people, Nyla. Yeah, you can't keep people in prison. Wouldn't that be great for the midterms? Wouldn't that be a great headline? Because that's something simple that people can grasp onto. That's something that's something simple regular people in conversation can can talk about and understand. Yo, you see Biden let all these people out for weed, yo. You know what I mean? That's something simple that will get headlines and garner him some uh some 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 great PR. I mean, they're trying. Like, they killed that terrorist. Nobody knows who the fuck he was. They do that all the time. No, nah, but they did this purposely. They, like, saw his ratings, and they're like, all right, we got to kill somebody. Trump did the same thing. Like, yeah, they, who'd he kill again? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, he killed the, like, Ira- the Iranian guy. They, uh, they all do this. It's like, yeah, eh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that, isn't that funny? Like, they're just allowed to live until the ratings go low enough, and then they're like, all right, <laughs> well, drone that motherfucker. Like, <laughs> no, that shit is like on training day, bro. Remember on training day? They let the white dude live until it was tell tell fucking Alonzo needed some money. Oh, <laughs> and that yeah. was his man. Yep. And then now <laughs> it's was like, to yo, go. now 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 he's a menace. Ah, he's no, he's a fucking menace. Oh. If I'm gone, you ain't gonna be able to take care of him. You know what I mean? Like that's what that that shit was like. That it's like, uh, hey, hey Brent, it's calling, it's calling the favor. Yeah, I just think, I just think, you know, legal uh, pardoning everybody would be amazing. Like this shit right here ain't doing it. Look at this. This this, this is what they. This was yesterday. Biden was trending. Biden delivers again. In one week, 528,000 jobs created in July. Unemployment falls to 3.5%. 
Zawahiri kills. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. The Chips Act passes. I don't even know what that is. What is the Chips Act? I have no idea. The PAC ass passes. I don't know what that is either. Inflation Reduction Act. I know what that is. 52 days of falling gas prices. Gas prices were bound to come down anyway. Uninsured rate falls to 8%, lowest in history. That ain't fire, bro. Yeah, this means nothing to me. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, know what any like, of these things are. What is the CHIP Act? Let's do with the CHIP Act. The Chips and Science Act will help American tech companies build, expand, and modernize <laughs> domestic facilities and equipment for semiconductor production. So I, I don't I don't know what you're already giving a billion dollar industry more money. Like, <laughs> I, don't, like, I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. What do you think of the raid of Magalago? Magalago. <laughs> um <laughs> But I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Like, what was the idea? The idea is that he had, like, top secret information he brought with him. Bro, Trump is Teflon Don for real. Yeah. Trump is begging to go to jail, and they would not arrest him. But, like, what is it that they specifically saw that he had? He had top they secret said, info they, with they him. They got him. They, the, the Fed said it's, uh, what are the exact charges? It's it's something to do with espionage. What is the exact? Pull it up, Taylor. It's, it's, it's obstruction of justice. Destruction of government records and some type of espionage. Mind you, this is on top of the, the 10 or 13 obstruction of justice charges Mueller pointed out in the Mueller report. They don't, Donald Trump is doing everything to get arrested and they not going to go near you don't, it. Bro. You don't think that this is like the Democrats trying to stop him from being allowed to run? No. President? No. <laughs> Listen. A little bit. They're not making up shit. <laughs> Trump, hold on. Yeah, Trump, yeah. first Trump goes... Uh, they planted the shit. That's what he was alluded to. Uh, yeah. Then he says, and I want back the property that they planted. Fire. That's fire. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought it there. <laughs> what was it? What is the charge? Yeah, violations of the Espionage Act. Jesus Christ. I mean, like, what? What? Do we, I don't know. I, if this was anybody else. What did he have? I need to know what he had. If they're just some documents that are top secret things that he already knew. Yeah, it's but like, you can't bring this already, shit home. It's a well, it's Mar a Lago. It's a fucking resort. Yeah, but you already <laughs> told me about it. What if it's nuclear codes? Okay, I have them now. What if he's selling them to a foreign country? Oh, I I don't think he. I don't know. What if that's been the speculation that that's, he's selling our nuclear codes? Well, to no, a that, I'm, I'm not saying that's what it is, but that's been the speculation. They're saying that's why the Fed would even make this a thing. Come on, you know damn well the Fed ain't running up in no presidents. No former president shit for no reason. Yeah, I, I don't think, think this has nothing to do with politics. But here's the thing. Yeah. If you're not going to prosecute him, it's pointless. You're just making him stronger if you're not going to prosecute yeah. him. Yeah. Because right now it looks like a motherfucking witch hunt. And all his supporters are saying that. His supporters are like... This is what his supporters love. So yeah. his supporters believe that the government is corrupt and there's corrupt individuals in the government that are using the government to enrich themselves and steal from the good American people. And they believe that Trump is fighting for the good American people to rid the government of these corrupt individuals. So anytime you present something that can be spun as corruption, yeah. you're just emboldening his fan base. It's as if the people that are behind this stuff have no fucking clue how I, to silence a guy. Like I agree with that. And it's like, I, I, I go back to what I said earlier. If you're not going to arrest him, it's pointless because it looks like you're just looking for shit and you don't really have anything concrete. But yeah. if you had something concrete in our mind, yeah. he'd be in handcuffs. Because there's nothing that Trump can do that's going to make the people that love him stop loving him. No, no. I think I think if anything, they're trying to turn the Republican Party against him. But the Republican Party is 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 out for survival like they just want to survive so whoever is in power that helps them survive they will support they all hated yeah. trump when he originally ran you remember this, until right? he They're, became the guy and then they were like all right this is our guy we follow yeah. we get in line i think yeah. you say this all the time republicans get in line yeah. yeah so right now i feel as if they believe that he's the option so the our, our DeSantis, that DeSantis scott ticket looks strong bro scott tim scott from south carolina is that right? My guy, Ron DeSantis and Tim Scott. I thought it was going to be Trump DeSantis. That's that's my understanding. DeSantis ain't playing second fiddle to Trump, bro. My understanding. DeSantis ain't attached. You know why DeSantis ain't going to attach himself to that? He may not ever speak out against it publicly. Not going to attach himself to that. I was told it's done already, but it doesn't matter. I heard DeSantis Scott. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Is there anybody Biden could beat? You can't run Biden again. You got to run somebody else. Who can Biden beat? 
I don't think he could beat Trump. <laughs> I don't think I, it's I, like I, I wasn't sure he could beat him in 2020. So who knows? Yeah, but the, the, even then, like who can Biden beat? COVID. He beat COVID. <laughs> Gave it to his wife, bro. He did. Yeah, she got it. Now. He did. This, all right, Doc. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> hey, the moral of the story is if you don't lock Trump up, man, this is all for nothing, bro. And you're just making him stronger and you're making his supporters be like, here it goes, another witch hunt. Now we're going to rally behind him Locking even more. Locking him up is going to be even worse. Like, you got to have concrete evidence that he did something that is That's right. against the Constitution, anti-American, like, against the things that they're fighting for. If he got, ev if there's evidence that he's looking to take down Nancy Pelosi, that is just going to make the fucking, his fan base go crazy. They're going to be what, so excited. What if it is something like he's selling nuclear code to other countries? You think they would look at that? Yeah. I think if you that think was, so? if it was proven that he was selling, I if it was so, to the bro. detriment of America, if he was enriching himself by selling our nuclear codes to another country, especially an enemy, there's no way you could support that. But there's know, no way bro. he's doing that. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to say there's no way he's doing that, but I don't know if they if that would even change people's minds. Bro, I watched these motherfuckers yesterday. I was like two days ago. These people think JFK Jr. is still alive, bro. I mean, like, what? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your people think JFK Jr. Why, my, is who's still my people? MAGA. You're Tim Scott. I am. I like Tim Scott. <laughs> <laughs> you You're more conservative than me. I'm, I'm from the South. I'm a country boy from the South. I, pro I, I probably do have a lot more conservative values than a guy from New York. See? I'm not, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm also progressive in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? I have a pronoun. Which is it? This. I told you this already. My wife is dead. That's our pronouns, bro. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't tell you this. this. No. My pronoun is this. My wife pronoun is that. And how does that work? I'm this, she's that. And that's all. You can get with this, you can get with that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know why this is so hard for you to understand. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What was that? So you can get with this, <laughs> you, you can, can get with that. that. You, you can get, get with this. this. Nyla, can how you doing? We missing anything? What else are we talking about this week, Taylor? Scroll. The monkey pox. Y'all know anybody got the monkey yet? That monkey. Yo, that you know right you? there. What? That right there. What? This is, see, I'm, I'm not a comedian, but there's so much comedy in this story, what, bro. The dog Click on the goddamn headline, Taylor Gang. Dog reportedly contracts monkey pox from owners. Would you like to guess the sexuality of the owners? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? What are they? Would you like to guess? But okay. right now, monkey pox. Is... Why'd you start off with butt, bro? And listen, <laughs> a dog belonging to a gay French couple has Whoa. contracted monkeypox. Parisian Alex <laughs> was just out there. <laughs> nah, chill out. <laughs> oh, that means Paris? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. You thought that's another word for gay? <laughs> I, I, no, I thought that was like just some other country. I didn't. I thought I was like Peruvian and shit like 44 that. and 27. Damn. OG Cougar out here in these Yes, streets. sir. That's Diddy and Young Miami, bro. Yes, sir. 44 and 27 is Diddy and Young Miami. No, Diddy's way older Diddy than 44. Like I'm bugging. Yeah. Shit. The Parisian men ages 44 and 27 who believed they had contracted the virus after having sexual contact with other guys during their non-monogamous relationship. The couple said they didn't notice that their Italian gay hound had developed... <laughs> developed Gray what? hound. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> What I say? <laughs> what I say? I think it's stupid. He had developed what? What's that shit? What's that word? Pustules. So stupid. <laughs> developed pustules on its stomach. Yeah, pustules. This don't even sound real, bro. No, dude. <laughs> like, this, no this is the New York Post. The Lancet Medical Journal said the dog shared a bed with the two men and perhaps licked one or both of them before licking itself. Ugh. A PCR test on the animal later confirmed that it had the virus. Let me tell you something, man. The world as we know it is no longer, bro. <laughs> what is that? The world as we know it is over, bro. What do you mean by that? Earth as we know it is Because this, this is ridiculous. The fact that this sounds like a spoof, but it's real. The fact that people are actually out here attacking monkeys. Wait, what? Wait, 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 they're what? out here attacking monkeys because they think monkeys are spreading monkey pox. Where are they close enough to monkeys to attack them? In China. <laughs> Taylor said China. I think it is in China, actually. Is it in China? Look at this. The who warns people. Nobody's dumb enough to attack a monkey, dude. Bruh, monkeys are fucking terrible. You give dude. people too much. Uh, Brazil. It's in Brazil. You give people too much credit, bro. At least 10 monkeys in Brazil have been attacked by people who feel like monkeys are out here spreading the monkeypox. 
<laughs> bruh, do you understand what world, what type of world we live in, bruh? I mean, just the idea of monkeypox is quite confusing. They, they're, they're worried about the stigma, right, of, 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 of labeling monkeypox with, you know, homosexual men. But they're the ones who started that. Dr. Yeah. Fauci got his ass up on CNN and, and said, said that it's, us- it's spread mostly between men yeah. having sex with other men. Gay but then orgies. said anybody can get it. <laughs> you but cannot do that. Specifically gay orgies. And it's just like. I didn't hear the gay orgy part. I just I heard mean, men uh, having sex with men. No, no, no. Literally, it was. Gay orgies. Fauci said men having sex with men, which let me know he is so ready to retire. No, orgies. <laughs> Look it up. It's the orgies. Really? Whatever it is, but they put the Just label cut the orgies on out gay men for summer. And now they don't want to have the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Like they don't want to, they're, they're worried more about stigma than spread. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel sorry for the gay community to have to go through this. And I understand why, because the gay community has done, you know, such a good job at fighting different stigmas that they don't want to. We'll add some new shit that takes them back 20 right, years. You know what right. I mean? Maybe don't quote Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, Jesus Christ. You quoted her. I didn't. The headline says Marjorie Taylor Greene <laughs> says go monkey look pops is spread it, through gay Stop sex. Y'all are, y'all are racist. <laughs> this guy is so crazy. Y'all are racist. This guy is crazy. Yo, this guy was for one of the bosses, bro. So, you got to fight Marjorie at the end of a level in a video game, bro. If it's you versus the GOP, hold on, hold on, Marjorie hold on. Taylor Greene is on like level seven. Bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It definitely, this right here says monkeypox strikes gay men. Officials debate warnings to limit partners. Sex is a major driver of the global outbreak of monkeypox. This is wild, bro. Why y'all doing this to gay men, bro? What you mean? Why they doing? They they're stigmatizing gay men again. Why? They're doing this the same reason why they you're did talking the, the microphone. Nyla. The same reason why they did what they did with abortion rights is they want them to have sex with women so they can populate more white babies. What? <laughs> say that again. You tired? What'd you say? You know how they said that the abortion thing is population control because yes. we run out of white people. Uh-huh. So they want the white guys to stop having sex with each other and have sex with women. So they're like, all right, there's monkeypox if you have sex with men. No, right. I don't think that's how that works in regards to sexuality. I don't right. think if it's a food, if it's a shortage, <laughs> if, it, if it's a dick shortage, you're not gonna just go to pussy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think they that. think y'all are gross. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> they think y'all are gross. I, I'm not gay, but I don't think that's how that works, Nyla. They don't want nothing to do with your vaginas, no matter what. <laughs> It's not pepperoni or plain. Nyla made this shit sound like inflation. <laughs> yeah. Like, if dick's too expensive, I'm going to start eating pussy. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> like, no. That's not how this works. You don't just switch brands, Nyla. <laughs> yeah, Jesus they, 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 They're going to rock out with that. Oh, let's do some Asking Idiots, Taylor. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Nyla. It made sense in my brain. Well, it's all good. We all say some wild shit. That's what this podcast is all about. All right, let's see. What do we got? What's the asking idiots, Taylor? Let's go. Who's the most famous person to get that monkey? Nobody famous has gotten monkey pox yet. That's interesting. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's they easy to hide. Nobody. Say what? They ain't paying no one. Oh, they had to pay Tom Hanks to do the COVID shit. You think they so. paid Idris Elba too? Idris was the first black person to get COVID. I know. I'll never famous. forget. Maybe. You think they paid him to get it? <laughs> I think um I mean monkeypox is easy to hide, bro. What? No, it's not. COVID's easy to hide. Monkeypox, you look crazy. Really? I you thought you seen somebody with monkeypox, bro? Oh no, you do get it on your hands. It's all over your like face, that. your hands, your arms. You look fucking disgusting. Damn. God damn. damn. <laughs> Yo, it's gross. No, nah, that is true. They I, 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 that, that meme that they got on uh social media where they're like Motherfuckers are more scared of monkeypox than COVID because people are scared of being ugly. Yeah. We'll die. Yeah. We don't want to be ugly. Know, exactly. <laughs> hey, come on, bro. Let's um let's play some, let's do some asking idiots. What we got? Uh Swole. Swole says, what surprised you the most about yourself? Ooh, good question. What surprised you the most about yourself, Schultz? God, oh fuck. What surprised me the most about myself? Mm-hmm. I don't know, Swole. That's a great question. I really need to think on that one. Surprised me the most about myself. Yeah, that's one I kind of got to go like deeper in. I surprise myself every day. Okay. 
I surprise myself every day because I'm literally in in awe of my life. In awe of your life. I'm in awe of my life. Oh, you're like surprised that you were able to accomplish all this. I'm in awe of my life. Interesting. When you go back, like when you really, and that's something you we all should do sometime. Go back to wherever you grew up, if that place still exists, that house still exists, and go like sit in that room and think about all the dreams that you had. And if you still have like old journals and mm. shit like that, and you go through those old journals and you like, really did this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really did what I said I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that shit is like, ooh. But yeah, you do surprise yourself. Especially yeah. me coming from where I come from. Like, I I come from a dirt road in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, bro. Yeah. I have no reason to believe I should be doing anything that you I'm doing. You had to believe enough to go for it, though. Yeah, but I had no examples. Like, you live in New York or L.A., you got examples. You know what I'm saying? Or you yeah. got people you can look to and be yeah. like, oh, that person is from my city or my, you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like it, I didn't have that I remember being super excited seeing DJ B-Lord to my man B-Lord on Rap City back in the day and Tig is like yo he's from North Carolina and B-Lord corrected him like nah I'm from South Carolina like oh shit you know what I mean and now you know I come from that you Google who's famous from your your state you know it used to be Andy Dick <laughs> yeah yeah shout out Andy Dick Vanna White you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I don't relate to them. Like, I can't do any. I love Will of Fortune, but I don't, you know? Yeah. But then when you, you know, later on in life, you see Chadwick Boseman and Stephen Colbert and all these people. Like, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, I'm, I am I am in awe of my life. So I'm, what surprises me the most about myself, my my life. Life. Oh, that's fire. Yeah. I wish I had a good answer like that, Swoley. My bad. I'm going to come back with a better one next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is funny. David Abramson said, if they perfected the height increase surgery, what recovery time would make it tempting? That question's clearly for you. <laughs> Not for me. In any way, shape. Let's assume that it wasn't for just me. It was for the both of us. Yeah. What what recovery time would you put up with? I don't want to be tall, bro. Because you see, the thing about this height surgery, they're not fixing none of your other limbs. Oh, shit. You look stupid as hell with these long arms ass legs, short. arms short, torso short. Dick small. Dick I always thought about that. Dick smaller. You hear these stories about like these Dick NBA smaller. players and how little they dicks are. And it's like, compared are they dicks to, little or are their bodies just The big? bodies are big compared you know I mean? to, yeah. Like, that God can't give Shaq at all. No, nah, I think Chris Rock even had a fucking joke about it where he's like, his background is smaller. Like Chris Rock's dick looks bigger because it's on him. That's what you would want. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, visually it looks bigger, but once it's saying. inside them, then they feel different. Like, 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 Let's, I'm just assuming if you seven foot three, mm -hmm. three hundred pounds, mm -hmm. in order in order for your dick to look big, bro, you gotta have like a two footer, like a, just a monster, <laughs> right? Like a two footer with like, <laughs> oh, like twelve inches of girth, like girth crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. be if you seven three three hundred, yeah, veins looking really stupid. But yeah. then how do you explain little guys with, with? Well, that's what we're saying is their dicks aren't that big. It's an optical illusion. It's True. like when you find water in the desert, you're like, this That's is right. awesome. That's right. What's the biggest dick you ever see? <laughs> what? <laughs> you you don't have sex now, little. I was lesbian. If you take the 10 inches, right? And Nile, you put, you're a lesbian? No. <laughs> come on. <laughs> you got eyes. <laughs> come on. <laughs> What's the biggest clit that you've ever come across? <laughs> What is <laughs> what's the biggest clip you've ever We're seen? We're being in inclusive, y'all. Like, yeah, like yeah that. we are That's being inclusive. inclusive. Oh inclusive. What's the biggest That's one? Inclusive. That's inclusive. Yo, forget I said anything. <laughs> no, but like, how do they measure clips? Is it in centimeters or like they what don't is? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> what I'm saying, if you yeah. take a ten inch penis, yep. And put it on a seven three three hundred pound man. This shit looks mid. Come on, man. It looks super mid. Come on, man. I'm NBA huh? players got to come through with more dick. Is what we're saying. What? <laughs> you be what? fucking NBA players, Taylor? Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! You just bouncing around their houses and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, come wow. on, Taylor! All that expensive furniture you running into? Sixer? Yeah. <laughs> Sixer, Net, Nick. Whoa. Tell, tell them the truth, though. You what know about Nyla? you, Nyla? Tell, about basketball players. What, what about they basketball got players? Come here, tell us. Well, I don't know. We don't know. Wee -wee? I don't I'm think in a relationship and I love my boyfriend. Couch, I, I think, shut up. <laughs> 
I don't think that. The seesaw. Nala, you good? <laughs> <laughs> Nala went up a little. I was like, whoa. whoa. Like, it's like God put his hand out. I was like, yo, chill, Nala. Don't do that. You're going to embarrass Taylor, yo. Taylor, go. <laughs> 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 Yo, it's not that funny, Alex. It's nice. A seesaw. A seesaw. Alex laughing. A seesaw. Tell us about these NBA cops. I feel cops. like just tall, I'm just not going to say NBA, just tall men in general. Yeah. Like, how tall are you? 6'2". So with six the six fat four. meat. <laughs> Pringle? Yes, sir. Snack size or the joint joint? The store. Little travel snack size. You know what I'm <laughs> something for the plane. Something for a flight. You feel me? Something yeah. for a flight, baby. <laughs> what we need the whole thing for? Y'all trying to get filled up? Have a meal when you land. You know what I mean? I hope you ain't hungry. <laughs> Yo, fly. But for real, I was on. saying, go guys, on. Once you pop, you can't stop until that shit done real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on now. Oh man. Guys that are serious. six four yeah. and up, it's a hit or miss. Some of them have nice flongs, like with the girth. Yeah. The other ones They got the little wee It's like little wee. They might as well have been five ten. Okay. But guys six two always got the most perfect dick. <laughs> That's in the Bible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's John. First John. That's are you talking John. about black guys or white guys though? Obviously, I'm talking about both. Oh. But white guys at 6'2 have bigger dicks than black guys at 6'2. That's also in the Bible. <laughs> what fucking Bible you read? The, the penis <laughs> one. <laughs> the, 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 the penis one. All right, let's, let's, let's do one more. Uh, <laughs> this has been coming up a lot lately. <laughs> you almost did it again, <laughs> yo. Why are you up, acting yo? like it's the wires, mm -hmm. not you? You're not going to be able to control your shit till you're 40, yo. <laughs> Scroll up, Taylor. Let's see. Is it gay for a woman you like to be lesbian? What? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what the let's, fuck ask the, let's ask that one. That, that's the good Is one. it gay for a woman, woman you, you like to be, to be lesbian. lesbian? So, like, you're into... Well, I think it depends how she presents herself. Like, if she presents as more masculine... Then you're into masculine-looking shorties. That don't make you gay, but you're into masculine-looking shorties. But if she's a super feminine-looking girl that just happens to like pussy as well, you just got more in common. That's interesting because I know I know guys who uh, they sleep with uh, trans men, trans men trans or men. trans women. No, trans men. They like trans men. Oh, because they like men, but they all so like pussy. Yes. So they like That's the best they of like, both worlds. They like uh, trans men. You know, they present as men, but they still have the vaginas. Yeah, because vagina feels better than butthole for sure. Not even close. Not even close. I mean, I've never had male butthole. Well, I don't think That's it's that saying. different we, than female butthole. I think it is because it got the G spot in it, bro. No. Yeah. That's a lie. Gays made up so they can stick their finger in your butt. <laughs> man, shy, man. As always, you believe if you listen to this all podcast. that conspiracy <laughs> thing, bro. As always. Yo. You hey, podcast. you know your G spot's in your butt, Charlemagne. <laughs> hey, Charlemagne, you never had a G spot orgasm, have you? Well, let me go help you. Well, we're we're Why you we're like the pink fucking pants. Where, because, bro, that's how gay people used to sound in the seventies. Bro, in the seventies, man, it was a different time. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>